Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Kativ's Autodesk Virtual Academy. I'm Nigel Mbaik, Application Engineer here at Kativ Technologies, and today I'm joined by... Mike Carlson. You guys got veteran, a veteran this time. Hey! Um, yeah, so uh, Mike is not a self-proclaimed vault guru, but I'll proclaim that for him. <laughs> um, and he's here today to teach you guys about some of the best practices within vault itself. It's really important to maintain a clean environment. Mike's gonna go over some of those details today. Make sure that you know you are actually managing your data with the data management tool. So um, I think with that, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Awesome, thanks. Thanks, Nigel. So um, really, Nigel, when he asked me you know, to do another AVA on vaults, he asked me for a topic. Uh, right away, what clicked in my head is, I gotta bring people back to basics. <laughs> um, there, Seems like I'm getting more and more calls lately, even I see them with support and everything. Um, just kind of some basic workflows, some basic uh, uh, even best practices, right? It seems like people are starting to jump away from those a little bit. So um, really that's what I wanted to focus on this. Um, you know, just kind of go back to the basic, what, what we recommend, what Autodesk recommends for kind of best practices on workflows, things like that. So that's really what we're gonna focus on today. And I'm just gonna hit you with the, I'm not a big slide fan, as probably some of you know, so I'm just going to hit you with a few slides here. Um, one of the things I talk about is support calls, right? So we do get a lot of support calls, and they they reference, you know, things that really, it, it, the root cause when we go back and look at it, really boil down to kind of just best practices and using some things. And this is a good chunk of support calls. So even though I know, you know, the, gu the guys downstairs are fun to talk to and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, they do have smiles on their face when they're talking because they enjoy uh, taking support, um, for you it's probably be a little less time calling us and keep working on your, on your files. So we'll go through a few things here. Um, as far as talking about workspaces and uh, project files and opening files and some, some kind of different workflows around that and what I'd call standard workflows as well. Uh, so that'll be kind of uh, one, one area we hit. The next we're gonna talk about is security. So this is really, I think, um, probably the most, I would say the most common call we get in Vault really boils down to security. Uh, so those of you with the Vault work group and Vault professional, we. You, know, you can get into these complex rules of security and start doing security on folders and files and categories and life cycles, well not categories, sorry, life cycles. And all of a sudden you can get you down, pull down this little hole and it's almost impossible to get out. It's real hard to find your way out once you're locked out in a security if things get really complex. So we're gonna go through a few things like using groups, not users, talking about um, the security of denying and allowing and what that actually, actually is doing and I'll kind of show an example or two of that. Uh, and then finally kind of we'll, we'll wrap up with uh, uh, maintaining your workspace. I luckily snapped this shot of Nigel's desk just before I got in here. There you go. Um, and, um, <clears throat> but uh, we'll talk about maintaining your workspace. This is a huge factor as well. Um, you know, not relying on your workspace. It's not backed up for one reason. It can cause other problems with refreshing files and other things going on as well. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more in detail uh, about that. Um, and like I said, one of my one of my comments here: check in and check in often. <laughs> you know, so um, that, that's 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 kind of one rule I'd say to live by and think about all the time. Uh, but again, kind of as we demo and we talk about things here, uh, we'll dig in a little bit deeper on the effects there. So uh, I think that's the last I have for now. We'll jump back to the other ones, Nigel, at the end. Yep. Um, we'll finish off there. Okay. Let's so let vault. me jump over to the vault here. So one of the first things I want to talk about is just kind of some of the standard work practice we talked about. So I talk about enforcing a workspace. Uh, really, guys, if you're using vault, there should be no reason that you're not enforcing a workspace for everybody. So what I mean by workspace, right, is your working folder. So in administration here, we define, hey, enforce a working folder for all clients to be at a certain location. Really, there's, I, I don't recommend anybody not use this. <laughs> don't allow yourself to set this. What can happen is you can accidentally move this. You can right click all of a sudden real quick or hit a hotkey and move your working folder around and that can cause check-in problems. Some of you may have seen it, like if your workspace, all of a sudden you start checking in files and you see under designs, there's another designs folder and a whole nother folder structure that exists there. That's usually an example of, um, uh, of a workspace is not set, uh, set correctly or the, or the project file is not mapped correctly. 
So really, again, I, there, there really shouldn't be any reason you're not using this. Um, you know, I, ha I have heard people talk about things like, well, our C drive doesn't have any space, or maybe only half the people in the organization have space on their C drive. The other have a G drive, let's say, or an E drive that they use as their workspace. Um, even if that's the case, uh, you, you, can, you can do some things like use environment variables in here to be able to potentially set that. So um, even, even to then just even partition. So take somebody else's space, partition it into an F drive, and then point everybody to the F drive. Something like that has got to happen. It's really uh, an absolute best practice. Again, I, I don't recommend this. If you're a single guy, if you're a single user, then you can probably define on your own. But anytime you're working in a team, enforce that. The, the next piece is the project file. Um, so there's there's been a few different configurations I see as I go out and look uh, as to where people have their project files and how it's mapped. Um, really, what really should be the key here is your project file, your IPJ file for inventor, I, whatever you call it, designs, projects, I, I don't care what it's called, that doesn't matter. But location should be directly inside the root folder. So if I come here and look under dollar signs, my location of my designs IPJ should be right there. It is quite common that I, I will see people have it under the designs folder. It will exist right here. Um, that's not the, again, focusing on best practices here, that is not the best practice in a single user environment or a single project file environment, excuse me, you should have it right here at the root file. So what this does is this becomes important now for when you're mapping this data. Um, so if I look at this designs IPJ file, and let's uh, just come over here to inventor, and I'll go ahead and uh, go in my project here. And you'll see I have, so it's my designs, my underscore view work, this is my workspace. So when this is located in here, one of the important things is you, your workspace has to be pointed to designs. So even though my project file sits at the root, so it sits at it sits underneath this folder, my workspace I'm still pointing out to designs. So make sure that's that's kind of the key. That's 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 the piece that's going to make this all work. Otherwise, it's going to say, well, I can't. You're going to get errors on mapping. I can't map within myself and some other things. So uh, make sure that that's that piece is set to the designs. And if you have any libraries, go ahead and and map those out in the libraries here themselves as well. So again, you know, at root folder up, uh, with, with designs mapped as your workspace in the environment right here. Uh, I, I do recommend that you use a single project file. So everybody's using the same project file. Um, you know, again, at that root level, you don't have a different one for Joe and Mark and everything like that. Um, it, it is a kind of best handled in a single project file level. Really, the only reason you need a project file is because Inventor requires you to have one. Um, one of these days, maybe, you know, when everybody's 100% on Vault, we, we can get rid of the IPJ file. Uh, talk about a couple other things here as far as uh, um, taking advantage of, uh, of search. Actually, what, another one I'm going to talk about here while we're over Inventor. I'm going to come back to Inventor. Um, while I'll say, you know, we have the open option, right? So in any of you that's been on a webinar with me before, this is something I always stress, right? Really, when we look at open, we have two different opens. We have open, which if I click this, this allows me to go anywhere, right? I can go to C drives, D drives, network drives. This is an open to anywhere in the environment that my PC is looking at or my computer is looking at. Whereas the open from vault, is obviously headed straight into the open environment. So there's a couple of ways you can get there. If you hit open here, there's open from vault down here. This is going straight into my vaulted environment, right? I, I, I hit the pull down here. There's no C drive and everything else. It's going straight into the vault environment. And I, I still point this out because I still recommend. Now, if you guys are using vault, you're over here in vault, you'll say, well, if I'm over here in vault and on my file here, I can open it and it says open. And yep, you can. It you know, Autodesk technically supports that as a workflow um, and says that that is a valid workflow to hit the open. I'm telling you, 
I've seen lots of problems fixed. You know, you, you guys think of those of you using vaults and you see, when you see files that need refreshing, you see little triangles, you see all these different kind of file refresh icons. Um, I'm, most of the time those can be resolved by using the open from vault option. Um, and so I just highly recommend that everybody stay in this environment and always use open from vault. That's just my own, you know, 13 years of experience in vault, you know, telling you to do that. Now, to support that, because a lot of people will say, oh gosh, but it's so much easier over here in vault to go to things and search, you know, or just browse through my folder structures and like it, it you feel like it's an easier environment, whatever, if you're gonna search and get all your criteria, get your result up and then tell it to open. Yes, that's probably true, but you gotta remember that all of these same tools are available in the open from vault window. Not, o not only that, like if I have a shortcut, for instance, I have a shortcut over here to a file. Um, it's this kind of gear motor assembly right here. If I have a shortcut in here, a folder in here, if I have a search that I have saved in here, all this information is accessible from the open from vault window. So if I come over here to my open from vault and select my shortcuts, guess what? There's my shortcut. There's my, there's my shortcut to this assembly that I can open it up. And now I can control out how I open it too. Um, again, with the open and check out. So this is, a, so understand um, structure here, right? Assemblies and parts and, and file and parent child relationships open check out what this is doing is it's opening and checking out only the file i have selected so only this assembly open and check out all is going to look at this assembly and all its children and check out anything it can um, now remember it's going to be restricted if somebody else has files checked out it's not going to check those out to you if something's released and it's got security on it it's not going to check it out but that's that's why i say what it can check out it will and then you finally have the open and read only. So you have a lot more control once you get to your file rather than just open it, right? And then you open it and it gives you a dialog box. Do you want to check it out? Do you want to check out children? Do you want to update? The, the, you get different dialog boxes. You can kind of cut down on that environment from here. So again, I would recommend working through. So you can do things. So you can, again, you have your search, your save searches, if you have any of those available here, your actual just, you know, straight kind of, uh, anywhere search, right? This is search all values, just like the same as pushing in a value right here. Um, you're going to do the same thing right here, and you can search any of the values. Uh, and you can even, even do your advanced finds here as well, right? The same exact advanced find you see inside of Vault you have right here. And so now you can say, okay, I want to search by files, and I want to search by, you know, whatever, author. You, you get the idea. You can build this from here. Uh, and, and, and make those criteria and then save it so it's now available from the open from vault. So again, I hope that's clear. I, I really, really encourage you guys, those of you especially like larger assemblies that seem to have some little issues with uh, these updated files and whatnot, I really encourage you to try and use this open from vault. Um, give, it, give it a week of solid try and I can probably guarantee you're going to be just as fast as you were over in the other environment opening it. Um, so a couple things to going back to search here. One of the other things that uh, I, I'll recommend is often is, hey, people create a project folder. So the idea is here, if I've got a big project I'm working on, I might have data scattered throughout the vault, right? Well, I can create a folder here. So you, here you'll see one called Mike Project 123. And, and what I can do is I can actually not only place files in here if I wanted to, but I could link to other files in other environments. So you see if, uh, hopefully you can see the little icon right there has the little uh, linking kind of arrow down in the corner right there. So this file actually exists somewhere else in my vault. I'm just linking to it. But what's cool now is now that I'm linking to it, I can actually come in here in Inventor and when I'm in my open from vault, that folder is an option for me under designs to actually open up that file from and just work from it right there. It's, it's, it's again, it's, it's modifying in, in its original location, but it, it's, it's here because of, because of a linking. You know, I think similar to shortcuts, right, in Windows, similar to that environment. So uh, I recommend looking at that. 
Let's see. I think uh, I think that's probably good enough from uh, best practices. Again, from security, from uh, opening, open using open from Vault, from uh, uh, workspace enforcing that workspace single project file, a couple of things like that. So the next piece I wanted to talk about uh, was security. So again, this is quite a common thing we'll get into support. You know, somebody's trying to do something and you get the nice little pop-up error 303 Can't invalid permissions. Right? Or something along the lines of you cannot do this because of vault restrictions. Yeah, yeah, like restrictions, that. permissions, whatever it may be. And 99% of the time, it has to do with some sort of security right. So you know when we talk when we talk about roles or there's security in the vault, there's when I say security, I'm I'm meaning kind of more deeper, deeper security things that are related to things like lifecycle state. Right? If something's released, don't let anybody modify it. If something's work in progress, you should be able to modify it. If something's waiting for review, you shouldn't be able to modify it. Or maybe only an administrator should. So, some little things like that. So. Um, what one one of the big things the other piece of i guess you can call security is role so you know those of you that are vault administrators know you have to have a role to be able to even do anything of, of, in vault so that role is that overarching big role like am i a document editor can i actually edit documents or am i just a document viewer uh, am i an item editor am i a change order member can i work on change orders the, those type of overarching rules have to be in place at a top level for you. So you know if you're uh, if you're if you're involved in the release cycle at all, and you're involved with modifying files and changing states, then you've got to have a minimum role of document manager one or two, document editor one and two, or even item item editor one or two. So those are kind of minimum roles because those are at a min at at a role level. That's what gives you permission to edit the files. Now from there we break down more granular. So we can look at things like I'll start here kind of at a folder level. Uh, I think this is a good folder because I put some security on this one here. So if I look at a folder level and go to details, you can see here that I've kind of created a bunch of things. So I told th people like, hey, I said these groups, remember I, I recommend, remember we talked earlier, um, always always try and do things in groups. Don't try to do it by individuals. Yeah, maybe if you have one or two people in your organization, I understand, but uh, but hopefully you guys are gonna grow in the near future too, so remember that. That's why I try to keep it in groups. Um, here you'll see I've got things like allowing. I've got these, what, so I'll call this explicitly deny, okay? So this is where things can get tricky is when people are starting to explicitly deny environments. Um, and, and it can get tricky, too, if you're in multiple uh, uh, groups. So just kind of to run through here, administrators are fully allowed. Engineering, I said, they shouldn't be able to do anything. Product design is allowed, and manufacturing shouldn't be able to do anything. Well, when I look at this now, so I, I have two roles. I have a role that I'm logged in right now called Mike Manager. You see that in the lower right-hand corner down here. What I've done is I told my, Mike Manager he's part of the administrator group and he's part of engineering so if we if we look at this now when i look at this as my role that i'm logged into if you look well number one there, there's kind of an overarching rule anybody that's labeled an administrator in the vault you can never fully hide a folder from them because they're an administrator they got to be able to change the security on any, any folder so so understand that's why the folder is visible to me but you'll notice it's got full locking. It's locked at kind of all levels for me to modify. But you think about this, like, wait, but but my role's in as an administrator too. But remember, I said allow, allow, allow. Well, because of my explicit deny um, on that engineering group, right? If I go back to this, because of my explicit deny here of any readability, it's locking the folder out from me. So it's going to the, the tightest point of security. If it has a conflict, if it's looking at rules in the groups here, it goes to the tightest level and says that's what you're at. So you know to, to fix this, I'd have to do a couple other things. Um, I, I want to show another example. So remember this folder, Mike three two one. Um, I what I did is I created. Um, sorry, I'll go back to here. In product design now, 
what I do is I have a user that's in both of these groups called Ron Reviewer. So I'm going to log in and notice he's allowed, this group's allowed here and denied here. I'm going to go into Ron now. I'm going to log out. Give me a second here while I log out of this. And uh, log in. Yep. And while Mike's doing that, um, I'll answer a couple of questions while he's doing that. Oh, that's pretty quick, Mike. Um, it's like if, if you do uh, check out all um, from the vault open, does it check out standard files? I'm assuming that means things like content center files um, and such. It would not check out content. So anything that you've labeled and, and is in a library, which would be where content center files would be, uh, or those uh, root library files that exist. So uh, here, it would not check those out. Cool. Hopefully I answered that question. If, uh, if not, Andrew, uh, let us know. All right. So back now that I've logged back in again, and remember my rules, if I go and look at designs, remember, now this folder I didn't do security on. It was the other one. It's called Mike's 321. So now I've explicit. So because of my rules, again, the tightest rule there was explicitly deny on manufacturing. It's denied me altogether being able to access this. Even though project managing says that he can see that folder. Yeah, in another group, I yep. could. Yeah, exactly. So. Um, see that effect and now now okay so how how do you set this how how do you properly set this i'll, I'll call it let me log back out uh, where we can see it again yeah you got some nice security on your users there mike uh -huh, i work hard on it <laughs> um so now i've got my folder back and as administrator i can go in and look at the security on this so really what if i, if I what I want, so so now if I think about what I want here, well, what I want is I want Mike Manager to be able to modify this. And I want, and I don't want Ron, I do in fact not want Ron Reviewer to have access to this. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay away and I, this, you know, essentially what this whole thing boils down to is I don't recommend using explicitly deny. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boil down, I'm gonna take all these rules out. So I'm going to take this group out, this group out, this group out, and leave administrators. So by me doing this, all this, the rules are now in effect that only the administrator group can read, modify, and delete. So now by default, I've taken away. Ron Reviewers in was in the you know manufacturing and product design group. Well, he's not part of administrators, so he in fact still should not be able to see this folder. But I've simplified this enough that now I don't create complexities later down the road with, you know, Mike Manager or somebody else if if I'm doing the explicit deny thing. So if I just leave this like this and come back in here, number one, you notice it unlocked for everything. Uh, it unlocked it for Mike Manager anyways that I can now modify it. Uh, log out, going back in quick here. Nobody steal my password. And... Um, if I come back in and look, it's still not there, right? Ron Reviewer is, in fact, locked out of it. So I don't have to explicitly deny, so don't. <laughs> That's, you know, unless there's just an absolute, you know, say you have a, I don't know, a folder, a Skunk Works folder, right, that only uh, Nigel and Mike want to have access to, and we want everybody else to be 100% locked out, then I would maybe think of doing explicit deny. Um, but uh, that would be the only scenario there. So that, that kind of security rule exists not only at folders, um, not at inv individual files as well, but uh, also from a, uh, a lifecycle state, right? So all the securities are on the life cycles here. So if I go to any of the life cycles here, and um, let's go to edit, and look at, we have the security tab. Yeah, how about that? Login is not Ron Reviewer since he's not an administrator. He doesn't get to see that, do that stuff. Cool. So, tools, life cycles, and I'll just grab one here real quick. So, our life cycle rules are all controlled by the security tab right here. So as you see, when we look at this one, right, work in progress, it has no rules on it. So basically when, when anything's in this definition and we're in work in progress, it's wide open, 
anybody with the role to check out and check in files can make changes to this. Now, I get here for a review, and what I'm doing here is saying that only administrators can read, modify, and delete here. Um, so what it's saying now is that actually what it'll do is when this thing goes to for review, because administrators are um, uh, the only ones allowed, when it goes to review, it's going to disappear for everybody for admi but administrators. So <laughs> this is not necessarily enough what I would call an effective rule. Typically, probably what I would do is add, there's a group of everyone here, which is a default kind of group in Vault, and I would put them as allow. Now, everybody could see the file if it's in review, but these guys, by default, can't modify it. Only um, administrators can modify and delete it. I'd maybe even think of turning that to blank. So the, that's just kind of one way to, to look at these rules. Those of you doing items, don't forget to put a check mark, a little um, bring security from, from the life cycle uh, down to the items as well down here on the bottom. But that just gives you an idea there on how, to, how that security, again, released here. Now this is, for, this is, we said allow and explicitly deny across the board. I, you know, again, depending on you and your environment, there may be a case that you want administrators to modify here. If if you forgot to you know dot the i or cross the t in text somewhere, do you really want to go through the processes? That that's for you guys to decide. Maybe, maybe turn off the deny here and add administrators to modify. Or yeah, the other option is quick change. Yeah, add another state for quick change. So um, just to to show you the other pieces there. There there is a. Um, Okay, out of this and close this. So there's just so you know, and this this is an administrator function. But if there is a security problem and somebody's having an issue kind of getting to something, you can as an as a, again an administrator role can go into details here. And there's this tab you see for effective access. And so what can happen here as an administrator, I can come in here and add somebody like Ron Reviewer. And uh, sorry, I don't know. Okay. Is that another person, I guess? Okay, there no, you go. No, no, it was just kind of weird colors. So what this is doing is it, it's looking at the user and saying, okay, what's going on here? So this would be a first check. If somebody comes to you with that permissions, they, you get a permissions error, this is going to be a first check. Log in as administrator, plug their user in, and see what's going on. So from here, you can see he's got it denied. So somewhere he's getting denied across the board. Um, and then you got to start looking back up. So now, now at least you know. Okay, yes, it's something in my security settings. Not, not a problem with Vault. Not a problem with the server. Not a problem with the role either. Probably right. It's something in a security setting. So now it gives you the idea. Unfortunately, it's still going to. Like I said, you can get down quite a rat hole with this. So um, you kind of got to work yourself back out um, to see. It doesn't point you exactly where the problem is. But it is again a starting point. So I think the the and then the last piece I want to talk about here before I move on is there any other questions, Nigel? Or uh, I think we're good to keep moving on. But real quick, I think you can answer this in about five seconds. Um, how do you link files in Vault as shown in your project one two three? Oh, sorry, that's a good point. <laughs> so I can grab a file here. I can right click it and drag it into a folder. Sorry. I may have gone fast. Cancel. So again, I grabbed a file, right-clicked it, and dragged it into a folder. I could do it here too if I want. I'm going to release the right-click, and I've got this create link option right here. So if I click create link, go in here, and that should be a link to it. I've linked it multiple times now. That's not a good practice. <laughs> Just, so Just because know. it was the topmost file. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Convenient for me to grab, but this is not a best practice. Only link it once. All right. So the last piece, you know, if you all remember the picture of Nigel's desk um, that I brought up on the PowerPoint was workspace and workspace syncing. So um, I I can't stress enough how important it is to not rely on your workspace for data. That being my workspace could be deleted at any moment in time, and I should only lose a minimum amount of work. So if we think about this, if, if I'm working in, if I'm working on files, if I'm creating a bunch of new files, 
and I check them in. If I, my habit is every day I check everything in at the end of the day. To me, that's a good practice. You're not becoming reliant on your workspace to save all your files. You're not relying on your C drive because you know the C drive can fail. And then every day you're pushing everything, all your changes, all your new files into the vault that is getting backed up, hopefully. And, uh, and, and um, you can get them back at any time. So um, again, if you think about it, if you're checking in, at, if, if your minimum is to check in at the end of the day, everything, then your maximum amount of effort you're going to lose is a day's worth of effort. Now, I can't tell you how many times I run across people that just create new files and keep saving them into their workspace. Let's put them in another folder in the workspace, another folder in the workspace, another folder in the workspace. And if, you know, I make the move to delete their workspace, or they'll go with no panic, right? They'll be like, oh, wait, I've got three months worth of work in there. You can't just delete that workspace. That's just horrible practice. Three months of work is now relying on your hard drive on your, C, on your, on your machine. And if that fails, guess what? That's kind of easy. That's, yeah. that's, the, that's a good amount of work. They yeah. probably don't remember what half of it was either. Yep. So, um, you know, two ways to maintain the workspace. One is you literally can, you know, navigate it to it, I would say. You can go to your C drive. In my case, mine's called underscore V work. I wouldn't necessarily say just delete right here, but for sure, you should be able to just delete designs and not lose any data. Um, you still need the IPJ. That's why I say it's easiest just to delete here. Now, um, the other th option too is this workspace sync, right? So uh, again, you know, you, you have the higher level of vaults. You have the workspace sync. So what this does, this allows you to let's see how long it takes. Oh, mine didn't take too long. So this goes in and analyzes your workspace, right, versus the vault, and says, okay, what do we got here? We got expired, man, what we call expired managed files. These things have been on your heart. These things have been on your workspace for X amount of time. They haven't been changed. They haven't been modified. Let's cut, probably delete those out. Unmanaged files, we got uh, things that have been overwritten as well. All these, the rules about what you can see here, you can control in the settings, right? So um, you can update to current versions or revisions. Uh, you can control what is man what's considered managed and unmanaged for how long, right? Two weeks, three weeks, one day, four day, because you can you can drop this down to days if you want uh, in the time frame, uh, and then be able to control that. Now you also can. The nice thing about this, when it gets this stuff up, you can say, okay, never mind. I, I, I these I want to keep for whatever reason. I forgot to check them into the vault. I want to keep them and and, and uh, uh, leave them there. Click finish and it's going to appropriately update with whatever we're talking about in the environment. So, at, you know, again, this is probably, I would at a minimum, please use this often. Um, don't sit there and put a bunch of new files on your thing and forget to check them in. One thing is real hard to find out later, uh, three months down the road, it's real hard to find out, oh, what files have I not put into Vault? There's not an easy button on that. The the probably the easiest button and anybody any and if you are in that scenario right now, probably the best way to do that is to go into Inventor, be sitting on your uh, project here, right? Your your correct uh, Vault project, um, and you'll notice that under Vault Server, and if I scroll down here, I have this option to check in project. So what this is going to do, what check in project is going to do, it's going to look at my IPJ file and the point and and wherever the IPJ file points to, gather up all the files in there, and check in anything that's not been checked in, or and and also check in files that are checked out, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, this is probably the easiest way to remedy that fact of I have no idea what's on my workspace. This will give you a report too. I, it may end up with errors saying, hey, I can't find children, things like that. Um, it just like loading in files to the vault, uh, you know, any other time, it's not going to allow you to load junk in if, if it's missing associations. It's going to make you solve that before before doing it. But this is probably going to be the best point to be able to get that that information back. Yep. And then something that I just personally do when I'm checking in files is when you check a file in from Inventor, it asks you if you want to delete the working copies. Um, 
I personally do that. That's just me. I don't know if Mike does that. Um, and then there's another, I know a question that's going to come up because it's come up before um, when deleting your workspace or checking in files every day, right? Mike mentioned checking your files at the end of every day. Some people want to be able to update what's in the vault, but keep the reservation out to themselves so that no one else checks it out, like say the next morning. That is possible. So there's a box. It's keep reservation or keep files checked out? Keep files checked out. Yeah. Keep files checked out. Um, and that's really, really big. So that, you know, say you're working on something for a couple of weeks, you want to be able to update it in the vault so that the vault is correct. Um, you don't want to lose the stuff that's on your workspace, but you also don't want anyone else to take it from you. So, yeah, I think if uh, let's do that quickly here, let's do the site wheel. So, I'll open and check out this. I know it's a um, uh, uh, just a part. So I don't have to do check out all. But now that I've checked this out. Yeah, and that vault browser is something in 2018. If you don't have that, that might be because you don't have 2018. Now when I check this in, this, uh, oh, I got my design standards on. Now when I check this in, this, these are the buttons Nigel's talking about. So keep files checked out. So it's just going to check in a version and right away check it back out to me. Um, or this is the other one, close files and just delete the working copies. So this is going to delete what it can. Understand if you got like 10 files open behind this and, the, and again, the parent-child relationship that's going on there, yeah. it may not delete some of them if you have them open, obviously. Right, so, yeah, it'll delete what it can. So you got to kind of be, a, be aware of that. But... Uh, um, that way you can check that in. And if you would have, you know, closing files and deleting them, it means it would have shut down the view and checked it and, and delete it from my workspace. Yep. So, good point, Nigel. And then another best practice, I don't know if you're going to get into this, Mike, um, is when you're checking in big assemblies and it's taking forever, turn the visualization off. <laughs> <laughs> so there's an option to turn vi or create visualization files on check-in. If you're sending huge, huge assemblies into the vault, and it's taking forever. I hear that complaint all the time. Um, turn the visualization files off, uh, essentially the v preview files within the vault, the creation of those. If you turn that off, it'll be so much faster. Because essentially it has to open those things, create all those views um, one by one until you check in the entire assembly. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, and just to point those out, right, in check-in right here, um, that's the visualization file or the DWF files, right? So if I click settings, I can turn those off, do not create. Or those of you using the job processor, if, you're, if you are using a job processor, you could send them to the, to the job processor to process right as it has time. Uh, but yeah, if you don't create, then it's not going to, um, what's happening is when you check it in, it's actually using Inventor on your machine to generate the, the print the DWF files, right? So obviously that's gonna take longer to get the stuff checked in. So that's what's going on, on there. Um, I think, and that, that's pretty much about what I had. Um, that's so those are the, um, you know, I think if you look through our support cases and the cases that I get called on and stuff like that, that's that's a good chunk of hey, if we just followed these certain best practices, we could significantly reduce kind of those problems that are going on. Uh, open from vault probably being the biggest one I would say, um, as well as the workspace management. Uh, that's another. That's another big one. Yep. Yeah. So just, if you if you got two things from this, use the open from vault dialog and make sure your workspace workspace is clean um, because then you run into weird issues where files aren't the same as they are in vault. You don't know exactly what to do. Maybe you've got a file that's newer somewhere. Or it becomes a problem. And then we have to uh, kind of untangle the mess. It, it takes a while sometimes. Yes, Nigel's desk may take a while to get cleaned up. <laughs> so let's jump into questions here. Um, if you have any questions, type them into the GoToWebinar chat panel or YouTube chat panel or Facebook chat, um, wherever you are, right? Go ahead and type those in. If you are watching this on YouTube, just leave a comment, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So let's go ahead and take care of some of these questions. Um, Mike, you mentioned with the workspace sync, that you can only have it on certain vault versions. Can you confirm what versions those are? Uh, for sure, Vault Pro. I can't remember about Workgroup off the top of my head right now. Yeah, to Sorry. be yeah to be honest, most people don't use Workgroup. They just go straight to Pro. I know it's a Pro thing. 
Yes. I have to confirm if it's a work group thing. Um, got a lot of thanks and good jobs from our friend Todd Wallace. So, <laughs> Todd, thank you. Um, we have a couple of chat things. What's going on here? Ah, yes. Okay, so cool. A question got put in for the link to the sign up um, from Eric. So definitely, uh, if you want to sign up, Eric did put something there in the chat box. So if you want to click that, that'll be a sign up to the page. If you have any questions, like I said, um, shoot me an email, email questions, and we'll make sure that gets taken care of. <clears throat> Question, when is Vault 2019 coming out? I can't say anything about anything. <laughs> um, I can't say that it exists. Um, but if you look back at the previous like 10 years of Vault releases, it's close. <laughs> <laughs> it has been in the uh, the a March, April, May area. So be on the lookout for stuff. Uh, let's see here. Will there be a live stream of the workshop? I'm working on, right now, we're working on some of the logistics for that. If we can do it, we will do it. Um, we got to figure out if it is viable. So that's just one thing. Uh, question, what is the proper procedure to make a change to a released part? or subassembly that's used in multiple assemblies, subassemblies, and drawings. So yes, if there's a child that's released of something that you're working on. So that that can be, that that be, you gotta first understand the kind of where used effect on that, right? So if that change, and think of it from a modeling standpoint too, right? So I'll call it, if there's a form fit function type of change that goes into that, you really should in you you probably should influence that up the chain to anything that that's related to. So so if you're taking a part and it has a form fit or function type change to it, then most likely that's put into an assembly somewhere. Well, that assembly should also be changed as well as some any anything up the tree from that. Right? Again, documentation from a modeling sense, you got to look at it. Now, if it shouldn't affect that assembly then you may have the concept of a copy instead, right? So, so if, if you're changing a part, but, but it, it's related to 10 assemblies that, um, that are still valid and you need it in the current state, then you're probably talking about doing a copy of the current state and starting a new one with that new design or whatever it is. So um, again, think of it from, uh, look at the where used effect, and then also think of it from a modeling effect does this have to show up the tree? I hope that answers it for you. Yep. Yeah, Lester, definitely. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, just shoot us an email or give us a call, um, and we can talk about your specific scenario. So that is that. I think that's just about it for all of the questions. I'll give everybody about 30 more seconds to uh, ask any more. But while we're waiting for those last questions, just make a couple of announcements. Uh, <clears throat> next Thursday, uh, we're going to have Javier Chavez, one of our other, I guess we'll call you as senior members of the team. Um, not that they're old or anything, but they've just, uh, they've been around for a long time. They know a lot of stuff. Javier is going to be going over some best practices for large assemblies. I know that's something that comes up a lot is assemblies bigger than, I want to say like 500 parts, um, 600 parts. Um, we've seen assemblies of 20,000 parts, 30,000 parts. Uh, and there are some best practices in regards to working with those, especially if they're vaulted. Um, one of those ones being don't create the visualization files because that would suck. So <clears throat> stay tuned for that next week. Javier is going to be here uh, kind of going over best practices for that. Um, so if you do have big assemblies, maybe you create industrial machinery, definitely be on that one next week. There's a lot of really valuable information from that. Um, but with that, I don't think we got any more questions. Mike, do you have anything else to add before we get going? Nope. Awesome. So definitely, Mike, thank you for being here today. Uh, everyone who's on the webcast, thank you. There will be a short survey after this. Definitely please answer that, and uh, it will help influence future AVAs. So with that, thank you all for being here. 